President Mohamed Bouhari has lauded co-founder and publisher of Premium Times, Dakwo Olorunyomi, on his being named one of the four awardees for year 2020 International Press Freedom Award by the Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ. The President's congratulatory message was conveyed in a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adishino, in Abuja on Saturday. According to the President, the honor attests to the publisher's many decades of commitment to the ideals of journalism and freedom of the press. The President said a free and responsible press remains an abiding commitment of the Nigerian government, urging the media to adhere to the finest tenets of the noble profession at all times. Olorun Yomi wins the CPJ award along with three other journalists from Bangladesh, Iran and Russia. And we're now being joined by Dakpo Olorun Yomi, publisher, Premium Times. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you, sir? Very good. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, I would first of all start by, by saying congratulations to you. Um, I know it's um, it's a huge award, and uh, yeah, um, you've definitely done not just you know, yourself, but of course Nigeria proud. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So Appreciate let me start that. with asking: Do you think, under the current um, President Mohamed Buhari's administration, press freedom has been good, or are we being gagged in any way? Well, press freedom is work in progress under this administration, no doubt about that. Um, but there's, uh, I think, a way of looking at the situation of the press and think that mostly until you are put in jail or journalists are arrested that uh, our freedoms are constrained. I think the most disturbing uh, challenge that faces the press today is an economic one, which, if you don't characterize it very well, is uh, an existential crisis. It's a combination, on the one hand, of uh, very difficult economic conditions around which the press now needs to operate. And then this is compounded, unfortunately, by the COVID pandemic, which has then really made it very difficult to operate an independent press in this country. So. A way of putting it is to say that I don't think you're, you're going to, to say that the condition of the press from a political perspective, because we have about 28 laws that currently constrain the operation of an independent press in this country. Um, many of those laws are inherited, so you're not going to say this administration caused it. Obviously, they have not helped by, by also easing those conditions. Um, but the most difficult challenge the press faces today is the very challenge of even existing as an independent structure, as a legal order, uh, which uh, Section 22 of our Constitution uh, anticipates that you can build a democracy without an oversight mechanism and that that is invested in the press. So the condition of our very existence has been eroded by difficult economic conditions. Um, um, you've been, you know, in, in journalism and with the press for decades, I believe. What do you think of the current news reporting and journalism now compared to when you first started? Well, I mean, there are great developments and there are areas of sad and <laughs> retrogression, one must say, but really good and tough, uh, excellent journalism is going on today. Um, generally, people tend to think that things were better yesterday than today. I don't think that's the case. Uh, some of the best reporting that's come out of this country in the 150 plus years of our journalism uh, really is coming out um, from young people these days. Um, but then we will be dishonest also um, to deny the facts that things have uh, gotten terrible in other direction. Um, there are serious ethical challenges and professionalism now that were not necessarily the case in yesteryears. Um, and there's really so much that needs to be done in trying to build uh, trust with our readers, our viewers. I mean, 
those that we need to do this for, you know. Uh, so that's really, so I, I'll put it in a balance. I think fantastic journalism is going on today across all the streams, broadcast, uh, print, online. Uh, indeed, the online media appears to have become on a flourishing of fantastic reporting. I mean, if you just look around, but then you see also that Nigerian journalists are really winning significant, you know, awards all over the country. Uh, and they are all very young people. So uh, it's hard to say that something important is not going on. So a lot of good stuff is going on. Yeah. But then also, no doubt, a lot of bad stuff is happening. Yeah. I'm also going to ask, you know, and this is in relation to something you mentioned earlier um, about um, Section 22. You were jailed twice, uh, and of course, Premium Times has also often been besieged by men of the force. When do you think the fourth, you know, realm would truly be free to exercise its role, and what must be done to give it that freedom? Well, so it will, uh, uh, freedom, as you know, never comes uh, on a plate of gold. So people really need to fight for their freedom. I think when the press comes to an awareness uh, of its role, of its constitutional duty, of its legal duty uh, in the constitution and asserts it without necessarily groveling or begging for that. But you know, you can also feel that you need to do that much from uh, a general sense of uh, interest. Uh, and then not have the economic conditions to to make that happen. Uh, my fear, though, is that we're not we're not going to have a great press until we have a press that is truly independent. And independence is not necessarily a political uh, phenomenon. It has to also be economic. You have to have the money to be able to hire the right kinds of. Uh, uh, journalists to run the press. We really have to be able to retain and give them good conditions of service, provide insurance, make it, you know, truly uh, a profession that really can stand its own because its duty as envisaged by the constitution is really enormous. And you're not going to have people who have not been paid, people who are so insecure uh, about what's going to happen tomorrow to do the kind of duty that we really want them to do. 2020 has also come with, you know, a lot of things that I'm sure a lot of we didn't expect. And I'm talking about a, a global pandemic. Um, I, I want you to speak on, uh, speak quickly on, you know, how the press is currently faring, you know, in the, in the light of COVID-19 and what do you think might be different after the pandemic? What are we going to learn? What are we going to be able, need to do different um, that the pandemic is going to teach us? Okay, so, I mean, what the pandemic really has, uh, um, it's really a big challenge for the press, you know. You remember that late last year, the, on account of the problem in OPEC between the Russians and the Saudi, um, the economy really felt a major hit and a big chunk of what is supposed to be the 2020 budget just uh, bottomed up. And naturally, you know, the financing mechanism for the media or advertising was the very first thing to get off the table. So we entered this year as an institution with a whole lot of where the money will come from uh, not being available. And if you are again in the print press, that meant that, you know, circulation, which is the next mainstay for media, which is yeah. sales in that general sense, it's also been hit. Um, so COVID, therefore, what it's, the major challenge it posed to our media is the challenge of sustainability and survival. Um, so survival from revenue point of view, but also the safety of journalists, conditions around which we work. Many yeah. had to work from home. And okay, you know um, how newsrooms operation tend to be. I mean, you want to have camaraderie, share some thoughts about with your colleagues, all that is yeah. no longer possible. Ap apolo apologies yeah. be because of time yeah. where we, we need to we need to wrap up, you know, but I really want you to, even if it is in 10, 20 seconds, quickly speak on the case with, with regards to the EFCC 
um, uh, um, or acting chairman Ibrahim Mago. I want you to get I want to get your quick thoughts on what has happened lately and um, you know where we are today with regards to that issue as quickly as possible. Oh yeah, so I'm so sorry about that situation because it's really a big mess. I think the government just made a very uh, terrible job of that uh, and everybody's really embarrassed both at home and abroad about that. Um, I think we're lucky we have Justice Salami who's really an excellent uh, judge and one hopes that all that will come. But there's just so much propaganda around the whole issue. I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't know whether this is the best way for government to really organize uh, issues of uh, corruption within the anti-corruption sector itself. So uh, it's difficult to believe anything that is coming out until we wait for what Justice Salami hopefully will be able to bring. Thank you. Once again, big congratulations to Dr. Paul Lauren Yomi. Um, uh, we wish you well. And of course, there are many, many more years of successful journalism. Um, continue to, of course, write your name in the, in the good books of Nigeria's history. God bless you. Yeah, really. Thank you, sir. All the best with your great uh, outfits. Thank you. You're welcome.